Oh, didn't see you there. How you doing? Welcome to Making Music at AESD at Home. I'm Mark Anderson, and today we're going to be talking about sounds and vibrations in our AESD Making Music workshop. So, started things off today by playing the guitar here. And the guitar is a great instrument, kind of took off of the instrument that we talked about last week, the diddly bow with a one string instrument. If you didn't see that um, live stream yet, you can go back and watch all of our videos on the AESD at home page. And there's some really great material on there. And if you didn't do the project last week, you can still do the project this week. And if you share it with us by sending us an email, we'll share your project whenever you get it to us. So. The guitar, again, is a string instrument. It has six different strings. And there are some strings that make lower sounds and some strings that make higher sounds. And we're going to talk about how we speak about those terms today and how we speak about those tones on an instrument. Change notes on a guitar by pushing down your fingers on the strings on the fretboard, and that makes the string shorter or longer, and that's what changes the tone, just like on a diddly bow. So it's a great instrument to play. So today, talking about sounds and vibrations, we're going to explore making sounds with some objects that you can find around the house. And we're going to talk, and the question I have for you is, what words would you use to describe the sound, or any sound? When you hear a keyboard play, how would you describe that sound? We're going to talk about two keywords, pitch and timbre. Yeah, it looks like timbre, or timber, but it's actually pronounced timbre. So pitch and timbre. And that is really what changes the high and low sounds. We're going to talk about what changes high and low sounds and what changes the quality of sounds. And then, of course, kind of in our workshop segment, we're going to build an instrument and experiment with pitch and timbre. So I'm going to put down my guitar here. And. We're going to first talk about the definition of sound. So the definition of sound as a noun is vibrations that travel through the air or another medium and can be heard when they reach a person's or an animal's ear. There are some animals you know, that they sense sound in a different way. They sense sound and vibrations through their skin or through hairs on their nose. Sound is also produced by continuous and regular vibrations as opposed to just noise. And we'll, we'll do a little experiment today with that to um, make, some, make some noise and then make some sounds and some tone. The sound is defined as a verb means to emit or cause a sound, a loud buzzer sounded, something that resonates or resounds or reverberates, to blow, to blare, to ring, or to chime. Um, it conveys a specified impression when heard. He sounded worried. That's not really the sound that you heard. You might have heard a student talking about why they were worried or telling a story. But that's the definition of sound as a noun and a verb. So when we talk about pitch and timbre, pitch, when we're talking about pitch, it means the high or low of the sound. If a sound sounds really high, or sounds really low. That is, it. that is the definition of pitch, or how we would describe pitch. You might also hear the words sharp, or flat, or tone, tune. Some other words you might hear when we're talking about pitch or pitches. Is it unison? What is the key? Intonation. That's a fancy word for tuning. You might hear bass, deep or pitchy, on the sound of pitchy dog. They're all talking about the tones of a sound and trying to describe pitch. Timbre, on the other hand, is kind of the tone quality. Bright, dark, brassy, reedy, woody, 
harsh or clear, could be buzzy, thin, raspy, shrill, mellow, could be strained, or it could be powerful, or it could be weak. Um, when you start using emotional terms to describe timbre, like excited, this, it sounded hex happy, it sounded angry, it sounded sad, that's not really the sound quality, that's the effect of the sound or its interpretation of the sound. So when you're thinking about timbre and you're describing timbre, think about bright, dark, brassy, kind of like if you were painting a picture. But when you start saying, oh, it sounded angry, now you're really attaching an emotional term to the sound. So there are some experiments we can try to help us identify high and low sounds. And you're probably familiar with these. You can find them on Chrome Music Lab. And Chrome Music Lab has a great um, variety of different tools and different kind of experiments that you can play with sound. So we're going to do a couple on online here to show you what sound waves look like and to explain what an oscillator is. And then we're going to do one here in the studio um, using an actual oscillator. So if you, um, you can go to Chrome, if you just put in your browser tab, Chrome Music Lab, it should pop up and you can find the sound wave application and you'll see this grid here with a little piano keyboard underneath. And then when you play that piano, you'll notice what happens to all of the lines here, or all of the dots. You hear a tone and you start to see waves, them kind of bouncing back and forth. If I stop, they stop. So thinking back to our definition of sound, sound being a vibration, when I'm playing a tone, now you're actually seeing the vibration of that tone. When I change tones, you might notice the vibration will look slightly different. This one is a little slower, a little more wavy. This one's a little faster and the little dots are grouped together a little tighter. It moves a little faster. If I go all the way up to the top, it's almost like single dots moving very, very quickly past each other. So you could, you could use this to play a song or a scale. So that's a fun way to really see sound waves. The other one is an oscillator. And the directions are on the tab here. You can click and hold the oscillator little character and drag it up and down, and they're going to sing a frequency. I want you to pay attention to, like you paid attention to the dots on the screen, pay attention to the line happening inside the character's mouth for this one. So here's an oscillator, my little square. And there's a couple different types of oscillators. There's a square one, a sawtooth, a triangle, and a sine wave. Oh, I just gave it away. We're talking about waves. So what shape do you think the wave is going to be in when I click on this guy? If you guess square, you're right. I can make that sound really low. And as I move up, but you can see inside his mouth there, it's a square wave going back and forth. It's a funny face. A sawtooth wave, you guessed it, he's going to make a wave that looks like a sawtooth on the inside of his mouth. You can slow it down to kind of really see that wave. Then we speed it up, kind of makes it, starts to make a completely different pattern. So that's a sawtooth wave. And we have a triangle wave. And you can start to kind of hear the differences between the different waves. Some are a little smoother. Some are a little rougher. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So experiment with your waves and your oscillators. And now we're actually going to look at a video of vibrations happening on a string when strings are played. And you're able to see this 
because of the digital camera that they used in this video to, to see this. So you could start to see that they look like sound waves that we just experimented with. No. Do they take a certain <laughs> shape? Do they look like a sawtooth wave or a triangle wave? Not be the most pleasant sound right now, but you can really s start to see the vibrations. This is the vibration on the violin. And you can hear that tone changing, and you can see the wave changing on the string. You pluck them. You can see that the different strings sound a little bit different and they both physically look different. Yeah. Can you pluck and then uh, how about, oh. about plucking them bow? Pluck one and then bow one. see what happens when they actually start playing a song. You can see how each pitch looks. Cool. Oh, we're going to back up real quick. So we're going to do an experiment now with an oscillator that I actually downloaded for my phone and it's going to make a tone like you heard on the on the uh, Chrome Music Lab. I'm going to actually play it through my Bluetooth speaker here. Get it paired up. Connected to iPhone. Okay. Let's see if we can make a sound. So this is what the oscillator control looks like. It's pretty basic. It's a free oscillator that I downloaded. So if it's, oh, here we go. All right. So we have sound coming out. And so I can basically change the pitch like you would on a on your oscillator. And I can change the wave. You can see the wave at the top, the different shapes of the waves. What I'm going to do so we can see the sounds is I'm actually going to put this speaker underneath a drum. And I have my drum here. And if I play the drum, connected to iPhone. There we go. If I play the drum, you can't really see any vibration happening. You hear it, you hear the sound, but you can't really see it. So we're going to take the Bluetooth speaker, put it under that, and you'll already know what it, it sounds a little different because it's hiding under there. Okay, I'm going to take some of my favorite building blocks. These are called plus plus. They're little plus plus signs and you can actually hook them together to build all sorts of creative little different things little statues buildings 
um, <clears throat> maps for your Lego characters, but they really just kind of click together in any, any sort of way. I'm going to put some of those on top of the drum here. And then I'm going to play with the different pitches. What do you think is going to happen? I think it's going to happen to the plus plus. I can stand some of them up, maybe. I can build a little statue. Or a tower. I'll build in here. OK, what do you think is going to happen? I've got my, got my oscillator on. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. Start to hear that a little louder. Oh, what's happening to our? Oh my gosh! It went flying all over the place just by changing the pitch. I, I was able to knock down or move these items with sound. Why did that happen? Because sound is vibrations. So we're creating a vibration by creating a pitch on the phone. It's coming out of the speaker, vibrating the drum, and shaking all these little bits. So let's hear what that's. Let's do that again. Cool. So that worked with that uh, squirrely wave, or it's like it's like a smooth wave. I wonder what it sounds like if it'll knock them down with a. Uh, with a more sharp wave. I'm gonna choose, oh my gosh, that one's scary. Oh wow, knocks them all the way off. Whew. You can tell that gets quite loud just using these things. I wonder what a different oscillator sounds like about this one. This one looks more like a, uh, it looks more like a, a big dip and a, a bigger arch. So the line is representing kind of like how the wave reacts or, or how the wave acts. It could be very smooth and flowing, or it could be really sharp and jarring. So this is more of a jarring one, and let's hear what that sounds like. turn that down just a little bit. It doesn't seem like the pieces are affected by any of the high frequencies. Nothing's happening. But when I get down to the lower frequencies, start to move them all over the place just by sound and I'm not going to move anything don't change that camera shot right there I'm taking it off there's nothing underneath there it's just the speaker uh, no one's moving that it's just a drum with a piece of paper on it so it'll even knock down you know plus plus or action figures or anything you put on there I wonder if it would knock down a, a glue stick if I put it on there <laughs> Might be too heavy. Made it jump. What about this wave? There it is. Knocked it down. Yes. Cool. Um, let's see. What else happens? So another thing we could do is we could put something a lot lighter on the drum. I got some salt from my favorite burger place, looking for endorsements right here, right? Everyone loves in and out right? So we're going to put some salt on the drum. You should be able to see that. Okay. And let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to be a little bit more careful with the pitch. Let's see what kind of 
action we get from the salt there. Oh, there we go. We'll turn it down just a little bit. Okay, we've got something right there. Then I can fine tune that pitch. Once I get kind of something moving, there we go. And let's see what happens to those salt crystals. Oh, it looks like they're forming some sort of pattern where they're, they're bouncing around, but they're staying in the same place. The salt from the middle is kind of moved out, but like these ones right here are all kind of staying together. So they're making a pattern and you can kind of see a pattern forming of where it's really thick and it's starting to come around to the edge of the drum. See if it changes the pattern here. Oh, that pattern's just starting. There we go. So they're moving again, but it's smaller and the pitch is higher. So the vibrations have to be smaller. And it does change with the volume as I turn the speaker up, it does change. That's actually called amplitude, how much amplitude you're adding to your tone. Again, I don't know if the higher pitches really will affect that at all because they're so small. They're so, there's, there's not much of a vibration, but the lower pitches definitely thing seem to shake things up. There it is. There we go. Wow, so that's pretty cool. Bouncing all around. So that is a pitch. This, this little device um, or app, it's just called Oscillator. It also has a noise generator on it, and you might have a noise generator at home, something that you know just makes kind of the the sound, and it's it's really just random sound. Um, let's see if I can make that make some sound here. Oh, I have to turn it on. Oh, that one's on. Hold on. And you can actually make a couple different sounds happen at the same time. You can do oscillator A oscillator B and this noise generator. So here's the noise generator. Oh, where'd it go? Gotta turn it on. So it just kind of sounds like TV static. And that again is under the drum, but if you look at the drum, nothing is happening. And kind of change that a little bit to make it a higher sound or lower sound. There's a little bit of choppiness happening now. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know that it would do that. They're starting to move in more like two different directions with the stereo sound. So then you can play with, you can have the oscillator A going on this pitch. Oh, sound machine's going too. So now I have the noise machine, the oscillator, making the same sound. Let me turn the noise generator off. Okay, there's my sound A. And let's hear sound B. There's that second pitch there. So I wonder if we can get two different patterns happening now.
Cool. Thank you for bearing with me with that sound, but really that allows us to see all of the um, vibrations happening when we experiment with different pitches. So pretty cool thing. It's just called Oscillator. Um, get in the App Store for free. It's a free download. Make sure you are checking with your parents if you're downloading anything. Um, and for our next part of building an instrument today or experimenting with making something, make sure you have your parents' permission to use um, supplies and materials and you have a safe place to do your instrument making. So we're going to experiment with some found instruments. Like last week, we explored the diddly bow. And you might recognize some of the materials I have today. Um, I have my tea box that I use for the diddly bow. I have some plastic cups. Um, I also have a cereal box. I've got some cardboard tubes from like wrapping paper tubes. Um, I've got a box that came in the mail from Amazon. Um, I have a tissue box. And I have a, uh, an oatmeal container. So you could use any container or box for this project. And we're going to basically uh, make a rubber band guitar out of those items in just a moment. Um, so what I have here is my tin box. And I have some, a bag of rubber bands. And I took the rubber bands and kind of stretched them across around the bottom of the tin box. And then I pulled the rubber bands pretty tight so you can start to hear a tone when you pluck them. Let me see if I can hear that from my headphones again. Cool. All right. You can tell that these two have different sounds. Kind of sounds like the shark, right? And I already tuned this up so you can play your favorite song. So pretty fun little instrument just made out of a box and stretching a rubber band, but how did I figure out what pitches to use? How did I figure out to make that sound? Well, you know, being a musician for a long time and being a music teacher for a very long time, um, we, we learn to hear those pitches and to hear if something is high or hear if something is low and we're able to make changes. So I'm gonna just take one off, a couple of these strings off here just so you can hear one. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull the side of the string and make it looser so there's more string in the middle of the open box. And that got lower. I can do that again from the other side. And the sound gets lower. Now if I pull it tighter, the sound is going to go higher. wonder if I could get it to snap. So you can make these rubber bands pretty tight, but at some point they will break, right? So be careful. So that's what we're going to do to our rubber band guitar. We're going to stretch a rubber band across a box and make a little opening. And then we're going to see if we can tune it up and play something. Another thing that I found while I was doing this, so for this, I'll show you the materials and I'll show you one more little thing that you need. You need some pencils, you need some tape, you need some rubber bands, a pair of scissors. You don't need the salt shaker anymore. We used that already. Or if you don't have um, pencils, you can use, you know, like a glue stick if you have glue sticks or maybe, um, a bigger glue stick. This will come in handy in a little bit. But I carried everything in this plastic cup from my favorite juice store. And I wondered if I could make, you know, a simple instrument out of this. So 
going to take a couple different rubber bands. And you know, this rubber band um, bag has all sorts of different rubber bands. It has really thick ones, like you would see on, uh, you know, vegetables. I noticed that uh, when you buy asparagus at the grocery stores, you know, there's these really thick rubber bands. Those work. Um, but then you can get these really, really thin rubber bands that might come around like your newspaper or ads that people, you know, tie to your door or something. So I'm going to use a thin one, and then we'll hear what it sounds like with a thick one. So I just wrapped it over the opening and over the bottom here, and then this is what it sounds like. Kind of the same thing. If I make it tighter, it gets higher. That one actually rings pretty nice. And what's really cool about a plastic cup is that you can bend it just a little bit. So if you're bending it just a little bit, guess what you can do? You can control the pitch or how high or low something is. And you don't just have to do, a, we'll try a thicker rubber band. Let's see what that sounds like. So if a thin rubber band makes a high pitch sound, what do you think a thicker rubber band will make? I think it'll make a lower pitch sound, but I don't know if I can get it around the cup because this one is pretty tight. Oh, I did it. Okay. Oh, so we are talking about timbre now. The, the timbre of the really skinny rubber band was really, was really high, was really bright and clear. And this one sounds a little bit muffled, a little more mellow. And if I squeeze the cup, can hear it a little bit. Let me maybe tighten that up. And the rubber bands are great because you can kind of experiment. I already just squished the cup there. Okay, so that's that clearer sound, but again, it's, it's not as clear as the really thin rubber band. So that's cool. I'm gonna try what it sounds like if I put a couple different rubber bands on here. And I don't have, you know, comments right now, live comments going for YouTube. Otherwise, I'd ask you how many rubber bands should I put on this? And but maybe we can work that out for next time, and um, then we can get some interaction going here. If you have suggestions for experiments that you would like to see, or something that you would like me to try to build, that'd be fun too. So you can email us, and we'll figure that out. All right, I'm starting to squish the cup here. It's getting really. Uh, I got four, oh, one popped off. Got three rubber bands, four rubber bands. That's really kind of make the couple of squished. So now it kind of sounds like a guitar. Let's see if I tighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna use a little guitar pick. Make one a little lower. almost sounds like a ukulele, like we had last week. Just out of a plastic cup and a couple of rubber bands. And I suppose if you practiced enough, you could probably make some pretty cool music and actually make some recognizable songs using just a plastic cup and some rubber bands. So I always like to do a couple projects where, you know, you could do very minimal, you know, with a cup and rubber bands, it's pretty easy. And then to do a part of it that's a little bit more intensive. So now we're going to actually build our drum here. I'm going to put my plus plus back away. Out of the side. Okay. So for this project, you can use a cereal box. A tissue box will also work or a box from Amazon, and make sure the tissue box doesn't have a full of tissues. I realized that when I picked it up today that 
it's completely full. No one's used the tissues, so I'm not going to do the tissue box today because I don't want to waste all the tissues. So don't waste your parents' tissues too. Wait till it's all the way gone and then just save the box. Amazon boxes are great for something that came in the Amazon box. However, they do have multiple layers and multiple flaps, so you might have to do a little extra cutting work to get through these boxes. Cereal boxes are pretty thin. I'm gonna take my, uh, my um, cardboard tubes out, put those off to the side right now. I'm using my cereal box and I'm gonna close it up. I'm actually gonna use some tape now and tape it all up so I have a solid box. up the edges. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to use the lid that I had for my cup. I'm going to draw, this is going to be my, my tone hole for the sound to come out of the box. I'm going to put it just right in the center, maybe a little bit back. I'm going to make a circle. And then I'm carefully going to use my scissors to cut that hole out. What I like to do when you're cutting into a box is to cut out a little piece first to give your scissors and or tool, whatever you're cutting with, a little more room to work. And just cut around the edge. We're actually going to save a bit of the cardboard piece that I'm cutting out because we're going to build, we're going to use it. So we cut it out here, kind of did a rough job. You can kind of see the edges are kind of ragged. You can tuck those in. Oh, I just tore the box. The nice thing about cereal boxes is they are pretty thin. So they, since the material is thin, the sound that you get vibrating through them is a little more clear than if it was a big, heavy Amazon box. And we saw that last week with the uh, with the diddly bows, the the one with the big, heavy can and the um, the big fat board, the big thick board. Didn't wasn't quite as high. Didn't wasn't didn't make as much sound as the one on the really thin board with the thin can. So I've got the whole got my extra piece of cardboard. What I'm going to do, that's okay that it's cut out. I'm going to just fold it in half and then I'm going to, you can see, cut that in half right here. And then I'm going to take this little piece and kind of fold it, use whatever I can and fold it into kind of a little rectangle. Actually, I'm just going to cut it. And I'm going to stack them on top of each other like that. It's okay that they're not all the same. I'm just making a little thickness, and then I'm going to take my tape, tape that together. It's kind of a stack of cardboard, okay? And it doesn't have to, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect shapes. I'm going to take that, and I'm going to put it down on the end of my box, and I'm going to set the round piece on top of it. This is going to be my bridge. Oh, the movie. Sorry about that. There we go. So this is going to be my bridge that's going to go on the base of the guitar, the bottom of it. Oops, that fell off. And it's going to hold the strings up above the body. So I'm just going to do the tape. And I know, again, like I said last time, you all are so creative that if you wanted to decorate these or paint these or 
add um, decoration to them, I'm sure you can make it a lot more pretty than the one I'm making right now. Really cool designs. You know, your favorite cereal. Let's put that tape on there. And you can see what I'm doing. I'm just building like a little extra edge on the box there. Okay. Um, so the next thing I need to do is I need to attach the neck. And really, this is kind of just a way to hold, hold the guitar. So we're going to put this in the other side. So we need to cut a little bitty hole, stick it down that other side. And this is a little tricky because the bottom of this could open. So I'm just going to be really careful here. See if I can do this without destroying the box. Without completely opening it. I think that'll work. Okay. Let's see if we can fit that in there. There we go. And again, the strings aren't gonna go on the on the cardboard tube. They're just going, it's gonna be just a way to hold it. So we're gonna add some tape just to the outside to secure it in place. And you could probably use any kind of tape, washi tape, blue tape. Duct tape's real expensive, so I wouldn't use duct tape or electrical tape, but masking tape or scotch tapes work for this little experiment. And they're just experiments. You're not making a, you know, a real expensive instrument, so don't want you to use real expensive uh, materials. So that'll that'll stay there and you can see the tube in there. I'm going to add a piece of tape on the inside just so it doesn't rattle around if I can. Okay. And you could decorate the inside and the outside of this. You could put stuff on the inside. Okay. There we go. Good. So I can hold it now. Now let's just add the strings. And for this one, I kind of kind of overestimated. I got the value size, the, the giant family size box. And I don't know if these string these uh, rubber bands are going to be big enough. But we will try. We'll experiment. It's all about making mistakes. So I got my biggest rubber band. I'm going to actually like kind of pre-stretch it to see if it'll go over this. Here we go. Let's see. All right, that worked. So the pre oh, it broke. I'll try again. <laughs> I knew that could be a possibility. So we'll try again. If it doesn't work, I do have another solution, a different idea. Okay, I'm going to be a little bit more careful on this edge. See if I can get it over. Okay, there we go. And I can see it. I can see this rubber band just hanging on. Okay, I got one on there. I'm just going to continue trying to get two or three on there. And then we'll play it before they all break. We'll see. You can tell already that by when you stretch the rubber bands a lot, the, the pitches really start to come out now. OK, we started to get some time. We got two. Let's go for two more. OK, here we go. This one might not work. The one wasn't a big one. Here we go. I'll try that one. So cereal boxes do come in different sizes. I would recommend getting the just normal size. I'm used to buying the big sizes because my family eats lots and lots of cereal. All right, so I got three. Let's try one more. Let's just try one more. All right, here we go. So at least it's kind of like a bass, a four-string bass. Wow. I can't believe it. I thought I was going to have at least two broken strings. They held on. Cool. So there we go. I got four strings on my box. You know, they just go around to the back side. And I have them going across the bridge so that it lifts them up 
off of the body just a little bit. Because if it was laying on the body, what would happen? It buzz against the body of the instrument and create a buzzing sound. All right, so then you can just hold on to the, the neck and you can use your hand. And yeah, it kind of sounds like a guitar. Don't really have any pitches yet. If I do individual strings, that sounds actually kind of nice. So that one kind of sounds the same. So the same idea, I'm going to go up to an edge and kind of tighten the string to change the pitch. So you can make up some songs using those. You could add six strings or 10 strings or anything that you wanted to this. Another solution, if you didn't have a box or if you, um, you know, didn't have a bridge, is that you could take your glue sticks or your pencils and you could use the pencils as your bridge, stick them underneath the strings, kind of push them back. Kind of like that. It raises them up a little bit more. Oop, it kind of fell out. Now you can kind of hear a buzz though. It just kind of added another, another sound. So experiment. If something doesn't work, find another solution. Try something else. Yours doesn't have to look exactly like this. You know, it might not be the same box, it might not be the same tube, it might not even be the same rubber bands, and that's totally fine. Experimenting is about just finding a solution and seeing what works. So I'm going to clean up just a second. I'm going to clean up right now, and I'm going to try one more experiment with the, uh, with the oscillator. So that is the you know guitar tutorial here. Oh, I totally forgot. I have all the slides here. I did the I did the uh, rubber bands. Here's the here's the steps of how to build your own. So I'm going to put that up on the screen so you can see that um, tracing our steps, and we can just review our steps. First, you're going to cut a hole in a cereal box. Cut it out carefully. You can trace the hole where your tube is going to go. And if you don't have a tube to go in there, it works just fine without one. That's okay. Then you stretch the rubber bands again carefully across the box, across the hole. And then you want to um, secure three frets to the top of the cardboard tube using a hot glue gun. I didn't do that. I didn't need a hot glue gun. I just hooked them to the top and left it there. If I wanted to make sure that they didn't stretch, I could put a piece of tape across. Or again, if I wanted to use a pencil for the bridge, I could put a pencil in there instead. Um, just all sorts of different things that you can do. So we're going to do one more little experiment with the, with the instrument here. Got my speaker. And let's see if I can do this. One second. don't want to make a mess here so I have all that salt on the top of the drum I'm gonna carefully take that salt and put it in a plastic bag that will end up in the trash okay so I'm gonna put that back on top there and I'm gonna build something like I wonder if I put these tubes up here I wonder what would happen I wonder if I could knock knock them down with just vibration. I wonder if that's enough. I could build like a little tower. So this would be fun to do with like Legos or put your Lego characters on there and then like test them and see if that would uh, knock it down. So that's my little structure. Or it kind of looks like a little robot. Here we go. Let me get the oscillator up. All right. Here we go. I already saw some movement here. Oh, one of the legs is moving up. Oh, top fell down. Up, oh, it's still moving. What's going to happen? Oh. You see the whole thing just starting to 
bounce around. Wow. So you can really see the vibration there. That's fun to do. That's fun to work with. Also the little, I think that's my favorite thing is to line things up and then see if I can knock them down with one, one hit. Okay, set all those up again. That's my last one. This will be our last one for today. We'll be back next week with uh, more making music and some more experiments. I wonder what else we could put on top of here. If people want to see more of this vibration, like what else could we put on top of here? Um, and see if it vibrates and see if it's affected by the sound. All right, here we go. There it was. We hope you enjoyed this week's Making Music. And again, if you want to share your box guitars with us, you can email me at manderson at aesd.org. Or if you want to share your, um, your uh, item that you made, your diddly bow from last week that you want to share with us, that would be great too. And we'll, we'll share it here on the air. I want to close by showing um, just one of my favorite videos of musicians that are also like scientists. I think they're kind of like mad scientists. This is the band OK Go. And they make music out of using all sorts of different found instruments and by doing science experiments. And you can find their music. They actually have a website with all sorts of experiments and lessons that students and parents and teachers can use called the OK Go Sound Sandbox. And if you just go to just put in OK Go Sandbox in your browser and it'll take you to this website with lots of different lessons, again, that students can do. They can watch videos. Uh, teachers can do this. Parents can do this as well. And this is um, one of my favorites of um, they're in a car and they built this giant racetrack that they're going to drive a car on and they're going to make music, not just singing in the car because most everybody can sing in the car and make music, but they're going to drive their car through this track and it's going to hit things that's going to make music on its way. So I'm going to say goodbye for this week and leave you with this video. Thanks for watching. You guys ready?
One 